We unpack a massive gather round from the pies surviving a scare to the underrated saint who deserves more credit. Plus all the drama from the Carlton Frio game and should the AFL suspend Jeremy Finlayson. This is Access All Areas thanks to Crypto.com. Great to have your company, Nat Edwards, Matthew Lloyd and Damien Barrett with you and good to see you both back from Adelaide. It was a fun weekend, wasn't it? It was, Nat. I mean, something really, really special has emerged in the AFL in the very short time that Gather Round has been part of the fixturing and it's Adelaide and South Australia that has made it special and I hope they get to keep it because it's quite amazing order. Yeah, I sat there for the Freo Carlton game and I reckon I saw every team jumper in the crowd. Like Everyone yeah. just loving football. It uh, wasn't about the t actual teams playing so much, but uh, it was just a great atmosphere. And I love the fact that you could go out for breakfast to walk down the street and there are footballers left right and center i bumped yeah. into harley reed one morning mark blitzars before his game so i reckon that for just the average footy fan would have been so exciting to see so it's a big tip well you could feel it couldn't you when you're there and everyone who has sampled it will want to get back or tell their friends to to go and do it and then uh, arguably Nat, the the best game of the nine in gather round 2024 was the the last one well let's talk about that thriller at adelaide oval last night the collingwood uh, the premiers really surviving that almighty scare against Hawthorne who came really, really hard at the end, nearly snagged it and it was a great way to finish, wasn't it, Damo? I, I thought it was. Uh, the comeback from Hawthorne, we'll touch on that aspect of it, but uh, this Collingwood team, Lordo, it's not playing with the status that it actually carries, that being the reigning Premier. It's it also ran on what we're seeing so far this yeah, year. Yeah, very, very patchy football, not as organised, not as disciplined as they were. And I've seen a trend in the first month of the type of players that are getting hold of them. And small forwards, so Brent Daniels kicked four in, in the opening round. Jack Higgins kicked four in round two. And then there's seven between Blake Hardwick and da Dylan Moore. And I think this happens because the pressure further afield isn't quite there. So normally when, this, when I freeze this, you'd have three Collingwood players versus two Hawthorne players, mm. but it's two Hawks v one. So Quaynor, you see, is in no man's land, just behind the play. So when the pressure further afield is not there, then Jeremy Howe is caught in no man's land and then Hardwick gets out the back of him. So this just wasn't what we are seeing. We are seeing McCreary was manic, Bobby Hill was manic. So this one, Quaynor's in no man's land again. Darcy Moore does not commit to this contest. Got to be hard. A child comes through him, then knock on... And it's like a Constantina effect, domino effect, where the ball gets out the back again. So you're right, they're not there. If this game went any longer, I was on the text to you guys <laughs> with about 10 minutes to go. I said, they're in massive trouble here. You could see Hawthorne were coming and Collingwood weren't quite the that team that they were last year. So it's gone on for a fair period of time now. So they, the break comes at a good time for them. Are, are you ruling them out of being premiership contenders this year? Yeah. Yeah, as we sit here right now, yeah, I'd be shocked if they won the premiership. Yeah. Speaking of small forwards, and we saw the great work of Blake Hardwick, who went forward in the second half and really changed the game. But what about Jack Ginevan, uh, Damo? Because he was the storyline within the story, wasn't he? And we had the popcorn out, and it didn't disappoint. No, the popcorn got consumed that the way we knew it was going to be. I mean, that's what he does. I mean, he, he, he did play well. I mean, the two goals he kicked, he got the freeze that were deserving. He may have missed another one or two, but... Look, I, I saw enough to think that he's going to try and change his ways when he does get the ball and not play for the free. That I like, should have been a free. That should have been a free. I feel it was, yeah. But I, I like what I saw, Nat. I, I, look, he responded. He, he, he's, there's theatre attached to everything he does. It's his 46th game of footy, and we're talking about him as though he's a 300 game of the way he uh, creates headlines. And all valid. Stood up, performed. I like the way Collingwood handled it too. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about him, the footballer. You're right, 46 games isn't a lot. And I know Sheeds always would say, you've made it when you get to 50 games. But I just wonder, has he hit his ceiling? Like, what else has he got as a footballer to improve himself, to be more than... You know, I've watched Brian Myers and Brad Close and these guys. And I've seen him get higher up the field mm. at Hawthorne, which is really good. I just want to see him do more. You know, I feel like he's a bit of a show at the moment. He kicks a couple of goals. And it's all about the free kicks. But... I just, I, he needs more tricks to his game, in my opinion, if he's to prosper and be better than he currently he's is. He's still only 21, he so he's got yeah. time yeah. to uh, develop that in his game. There was another close finish yesterday, and Gather Round was full of them, really. This was at Norwood Oval, St Kilda beating Richmond by seven points. And it was a game of, I guess, two halves, because the Saints were 22 points down at half time, but a six goal blitz, Lloydy, in the third term really set them up. And it's something Ross has got to think about, like, how, how can we be uh, on 13 points at halftime on a perfect condition day type of football? So if you are doing that against the better side, you're out of the game. You're going to lose. Um, so, you know, full credit to them. They turn it around. Um, you know, but 
you know, Richmond are battered, beaten up, mm. and they just got over the line. So they'd want to improve a lot on that St Kilda a bit to go, to, you know, to make the top eight. And Damo, you love cuddly Ross, but Ross got a little bit weird in the press conference afterwards, saying that there was a UFO that landed <laughs> at half time and there were aliens on the field. What is going on? Deflection is called Nat. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think he wants us to analyse what happened in the, particularly that first quarter and, and parts of the second. And to Lordo's point, they're, they're going to have to score yeah. better. It's been a problem for them, and he knows it, and he's still developing, but. To Lotto's point again, the, the Richmond team wasn't the quality of opponent that would have blown them away if they could. Well, our crypto brave play this week has to go to young Saint Darcy Wilson. I think he's played four games as a minute 38 and look, he lays that tackle. It was his only tackle, Lloydie, for the day, but he made it count. I know why he can do it. He's one of the best runners at St Kilda already, so that's what you want. And Ross loves that in players. If you can't run, you can't play at St Kilda because Ross is big on... Uh, endurance runners and Wilson worked hard late in the game. Now you want to highlight a saint that you think is fairly underrated and deserves a little bit more credit. Yeah and it's Josh Battle. I think that intercept defenders are just nearly the most important player in the game. Every team needs them and it's always been Callum Wilkie's and All-Australian but when you've got, uh, now they've got two of them so 25 disposals, 13 marks, you see the statistics there and you see even him dance around a few players shortly. The confidence is growing. He takes down the best players, but also he's starting to do moments like this. Oh, that's I nice, certainly isn't didn't it? teach him that. <laughs> but uh, it's good to see a player like that developing because, as I said, he, he's super fit and getting the rewards. And sometimes, too, I know we've just talked negatively about the Saints. Sometimes you've just got to grind it out. Yeah, and exactly. they did. I mean, they could have lost it, and that would have uh, been impactful on their hopes to make the finals. And unlike what Hawthorne did, they weren't able to get the, the four points. St Kilda did. Well, if the Tigers were able to run over the top, we would be talking about Shea Bolton. And we should talk about him anyway because he is just one of these players that I would pay money to go to the football and watch. Look at this. Four goals yesterday, 19 touches, a couple of brilliant um, goals there from the pocket as well, uh, yeah. Lloydie, and then a big bomb as well. What I loved about it is I think the game is heading towards, I was talking about the best players in our game is Petrarca, Heaney, Bontempelli. They're all the big, powerful midfielders who can go forward, yet this guy is so unique. Mm. I'm not sure, uh, I know Connor Rosie kicked 30, had 30 and kicked three, but this guy's like a pure forward. It's hard to you know, liken him to anyone else playing the game at the moment with how well he's going. Well, yesterday was the Expansion Cup, as we liked it, Dubber, but it was the Giants who got it done over the Gold Coast Suns, who looked much improved. Toby Green, the Giants skipper, kicked five goals. And when you look at the Giants, they've got so many options. Jesse Hogan kicked four, Callum Brown kicked three, Riccardi with two. It's no surprise they're the number one ranked team when it comes to offence. Yeah, I look at premiership profiles, Damo, and, and when we get this up, this is a premiership profile. It's only early, but you want to be top four in both areas so obviously against that's pretty good they're conceding 10 goals and you're kicking 17 you are shellacking your teammates week in and week out and so that's what we want to look at and it's just their offensive uh, look so they've got Toby Green and Brent Daniels who can do it in, in a certain way they've got Callum Brown who's like your your in-between player, and then you've got Jesse Hogan, mm. who straightens them right up. So they don't really lack for much. No, they don't. They don't. And it needed uh, the, a top shelf game yeah. from Toby Green yesterday, Nat, to, to get him across the line. I know he's been more than solid this year, but he hasn't had the, the goals return that he got yesterday with five and the creativity. And that could have been taken away from him that, that game. Mm. The Suns were more than competitive with all the changes they made and quite courageously made and have, have made a statement in so doing for the moment of the season. And from a Suns perspective too, Damo McAndrew probably had a break out game, his best game to date yeah. so far. And I think if you're Damien Hardwick, you're pretty pleased with this. Oh, you just wrapped. I mean, there's been issues off-field, Nat, as we've known, and the club has admitted to that. He's admitted to them himself. But when he plays like he did yesterday, w without a care, um, and that, in that beautiful, carefree way, and taking one-handed marks there on the last line of the fence, setting up play. I mean, he, he can butcher the, the use of the ball, but it still gets to where his teammates are. Mm. And I love what he did yesterday, Lauder. Yeah, and Damien Hardwick, I also love what he did at selection. It only took him three to four games to say, OK, I'm going to make three, play three mm. debutantes and leave out, you know, Casbolt, Brandon Ellis, Ellis yeah. Swallow, 
uh, those types of players. So uh, I think it's a new wave coming through at the Suns. Well, let's see what they can do. They play Hawthorne next week. We're just going to change pace for a moment now. And I really hate to be talking about something like this, but we need to address it. And power forward Jeremy Finlayson has apologised for a homophobic slur that was aimed at an Essendon player during uh, Friday night's game. Power chairman David Kosh has also addressed the issue. Let's take a listen. The words I use is very unacceptable in the game of football. Um, we need to stamp it out and, um, yeah, I'm very remorseful. It's, it's not acceptable and um, I take full responsibility of that. And, um, yeah, I addressed it at the time um, and, and, yeah, moved on and, um, yeah, just let everyone know what, what happened and um, it's now it's in the hands of the AFL to investigate. We're, we'll wait for the AFL process to, to play out before we do anything, but... But you're not a, ruling that out? Um, no, not ruling it out, but, um, you know, if you look at comparisons and benchmarks yep. have, have got to be set with, um, you know, 55-year-old coach, uh, premeditated, target the player, walk up to them, it is very different to a player in the heat of battle uh, when there was a lot of <coughs> niggle in the game, um, the pressure, again, no, absolutely no excuse, not condoning it whatever, uh, and should not be part of the game. But if you're going to look at a comparison, that would so be the benchmark. If I put it, it to you, different. it's in the same category as Taylor Walker's racial slur. How would you respond to that? Yeah, I don't think that's realistic. Damo, keen to get your thoughts on this one and the 55-year-old coach that David Kosh was referring mm. to is Alistair Clarkson, who was fined $20,000 um, just a couple of weeks ago. Your take on this, should the AFL come down hard on Jeremy Finlayson? I think they should, no. But I feel they missed the opportunity to mm. do so on Alistair Clarkson. Now, everyone had their views on that. But in, in my case at the time, I was really strong that Clarkson should have been suspended. The use of that word, and again, on this program, we chose not to use the word on that occasion. We're not going to use it today, That what Jeremy Finlayson said. But they've both admitted to, to being homophobic words. And for the game to, and this is my words, Nat, walk past what Alistair Clarkson did. Now, I know he was sanctioned, I know he was fined, and I know there's a suspended sentence hanging over his head, but he was able to coach the very next game. Equally, I feel that the AFL needs to suspend Jeremy Finlayson. But if to David Kosh's point, and I know you want to raise some issues mm. with David Kosh's statement there, but I feel he has rights to say there is a comparison there. They, they only sanctioned Clarkson to a certain point. I would have suspended Clarkson. I would have suspended Finlayson. I hope they suspend Finlayson. Is it too late, given the precedent is set? It's never too late. You've got to stake it, make a stand somewhere. And there's no reason it can't be done now. But, but they've gone into 2024 with that being the benchmark. It would have been very easy for the benchmark to have been harsh at that stage. And then we know. Jeremy Finlayson would know right now that he's not playing football next week if they were hard mm. on Clarkson. I mean, you, you would have taken it down a different path, Matt. Uh, yeah, I just think with Koshy, and, and I just think that he has to be so careful with the language because he's come out and said I don't condone what Jeremy Finlayson said and I'm not making excuses but then in the same sentence has said but there was a lot of heat and a lot of niggle in the game I just think if you're looking at that as a young person who might be grappling or questioning their sexuality and you see that you're not going to feel safe to come out, you might second guess yourself. And it's no surprise that there is no AFL player who has actually come out as gay because I still don't think mm. it's a safe environment for them to do so. So we have to be so careful because what was said was so damaging, not just on a football field, yeah. but when you look wider at society and the impact on young people as a role model, yep. It's so hurtful. And, and people might be listening to this and thinking we are overcooking a situation and, and that's the, they're, they're entitled to those views. But the two words in question are, are words that were used by senior football people. Alistair Clarkson, who's been around forever. Jeremy Finlayson, who's been in the system a long time. They just should know better. And, and I would have had, the, as I said, suspended them both. I just think it's on par with the racial slur that Taylor Walker um, and that issue in 2021, which saw him get a six-game ban. I see them both as equally abhorrent. So that's where I stand on that one. Let's move on now and go to Saturday night at Adelaide Oval. The Cats' unbeaten run continued with Geelong holding off a late fight back from the Dogs. And, Damo, I'm sure you're very smug with <laughs> well, Four you, and oh. I wasn't going to go there, Nat, but you did ridicule me, and you did too, <laughs> on the very first show when I had him in the grand final, and I think you've got him in there right now after their form. Yeah, the, the Western Bulldogs thought they had a golden opportunity because Geelong were coming off a five-day break, but there's some runners at Geelong that just play so many multiple roles. Jeremy Cameron gets up high, Grian Myers gets high, Brad Close gets high, and we're going to 
reference here, the work rate of some of these players. So there's Brian Myers. So that's how high they get up to defend the ground, to support in defence and then work hard forward. So you watch Brian, he's working the field here. He sees now they've won the ball. So the ball goes in long and Jeremy Cameron's high. Henry from Geelong, who's in awesome form, who Damo also predicted earlier, would have <laughs> all Australian year. <laughs> all Australian year. And there's Myers and Cameron bob up. So this just happens time and time again. Opposition forward lines, they jump all on top of each other. These two players don't because here's Myers. He's a forward, but he's up on the half-back flank supporting his team again. So he kicks the ball. He doesn't stop. So if you're a young forward watching this, look at the work rate you must have. Here's Brian working through the centre of the ground. That is intensity. That's the work rate that he goes at from the first second to the last second. He's back involved and then has the poise and the skill to then hit a player, lace out. So again, it's all, that's pre-season after pre-season after pre-season mm. that they do at Geelong and uh, they're a wonderful footy club. It's also an illustration there of the midfield mix of the Cats. Yeah. And I want to highlight that against what the, the Dogs did. I think Tom Libertore played one of the all-time great games he's played over a, amazing. an amazing career. Equally, Marcus Bontempelli, um, my favourite footballer since Wayne Carey. <laughs> again, he had, another, he had another game that, which was absolutely top shelf. So too was Trelaw. And I raise it in the context, those numbers are amazing. They're not going to get a better outcome from those three starting midfielders than they did in that game. And then you line it up with these numbers. Jeremy Cameron's more a key forward, but he's playing as a midfielder this year more so than ever. But mm. they're just numbers that don't make sense to look at them on screen. I'd rather like. this so, David. That's what I'm, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm highlighting. Yeah. They could not get more out of those three at the Bulldogs, and it didn't work. But is it, are they too reliant on yes. three? Yes. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I, mean, I think we're both making yeah, yeah, the same yeah. point. And I think it's an opportunity lost, too, in that game, too, Nat. I mean, they, they had the Cats coming off that Easter yeah. Monday game in the slog, delayed finish. They knew they were going to be tired, and they were 28 points down. They nearly got them, but they didn't, and it's an opportunity missed. And now they're 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. And, you know. and they've only beaten West Coast and Gold Coast. Yeah, exactly. All right, some work to do for the the dogs. There was also high drama at Adelaide Oval on Saturday evening. Carlton stealing the win over the Dockers to maintain their unbeaten start to the season. Now it's a moment that everyone is talking about from the weekend. We know that the ball was touched. The AFL has admitted that was missed. But should we be looking more closely, Lloydy, at the last stoppage? Because um, before that kick to Matt Cottrell, Luke Jackson, probably, if he'd had his time again, would do something a little bit different. Yeah, you just got to drop it in nice and tight. He smashed it out into traffic. So that they're the things that Justin Longmuir can control, not umpiring decisions. So I think we've made too much of it. You know, mm. The amount of mistakes that players make mm. within a game are just countless. Like the turnovers in our yep. game, yet... Unfortunately, we are going to have umpires who make mistakes, and, and that was. A you can't hold that against no, you can't an umpire. hold it at all. In that moment, in that flurry of so hard to play. see, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about the free kick for for descent? Because we haven't seen all that many um, free kicks for descent paid in twenty twenty four, and this one. Yeah. I don't know. As always, it? I'm more than comfortable when the descent free kick is paid, as it was against Jordan Clark, and whether he was directing the, the words, and there's a, a swear word in there amongst the mix, at himself or others, as his coach on screen there, post-match, Justin Longmuir said, just be better in that moment. So yeah. that's that aspect of it. Um, to your point, it has been relaxed, there's no doubt, from the crackdown, which I liked last year, but they softened it as the year unfolded, and it hasn't been too many this mm, year. You compared. just want that consistency, yeah. don't you? I've got no drum with it, but let's make sure more that's the norm now. Yeah. The Crows, 0 and 4 to start the season. Are they the biggest disappointment so far of 2024? Yeah, they are because um, you know we expect more from them. Hawthorne, North and West Coast, you know where they are as a team. But Adelaide talked finals at the start of the year and they're nowhere near it. Uh, we look at their ball movement and Matthew Nix has to say to his players, we're, we're, we're a bottom four side playing this way. If I'm going to go there, he should think to himself, I'm going to lose my job at some point. Every coach loses mm. their job. Lose it playing the right brand. Uh, they're the 17th ranked scoring side. They've only scored eight more points than the West Coast Eagles. And they were number one last and year. And they were number one. Mm. And, and they're the seventh ranked defence. But that's because they're so safe with the footy, you're, you're going to be defensively sound because they don't take any risk, Damon. We know they can do it because they yeah. did it in the last quarter against Melbourne. Yeah. The different style and the style they had a lot of last year. They did it in the first game when they basically yeah. had thrown it away against Gold Coast and nearly stole it with ball movement in the last quarter. Why don't they do it? At exactly. least at least for half a game to start the game. And good sides just love that. You love when a team wants to kick sideways. And they come to Marvel to play Carlton on the weekend. So it's a final in April this weekend for the Adelaide Crows.
Damo, I mean, Owen Four, they re-sign Matthew mm. Nix. The heat is going to come. The pressure is going to come for him. How do they handle this as a football well, club? Well, it needs to. And they'll, they'll probably be uh, comforted by re-signing him. But I, I don't feel it makes any difference to what may have to happen um, because this was the year they were meant to spike. And he's had time. They were telling us they were ready. Everyone at the club was telling us they were ready. And, and they have not performed. And they've got a tough stretch of matches now, which is not going to make it easy. All right, time now for some quick hands, quick fire questions. Damo, the first one's for you. Was Saturday uh, or Friday night's performance a coming of age game for Connor Rosie and his captaincy? Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, uh, he, his form has already been well established. He's a, he's a young 24 year old. He stood up in the heat of battle when that game had to be there and won. And it was a massive moment for an Adelaide team and gather around this week. And at quarter time, the game was uh, nicely poised and placed for, for both teams. But then he just had already established that yeah. dominance from himself and then just blew the bombers away. Absolutely. Absolutely uh, full franking, coming of age uh, game for him <laughs> as captain. Hey, Lordo, I'm going to go to you. Do you trust Essendon any more than you did this time last year? I'll say yes, Damo, uh, because I've been belted many a time over there at, at, footy, at footy Park or the Adelaide Oval. It's a tough place to go, but it was an unforgivable performance. But uh, Friday night, I won't be as nice, Damo. Give him another chance. I'll give him another chance oh. against the Western Bulldogs on Friday Last night. chance? Uh, well, you're not factoring the last four matches of last year, which were a disaster. Yeah, uh, they were a disaster. That was a disaster on the weekend, but the What's previous disaster? three were OK. There <laughs> is a lot of disasters, <laughs> but I trust them more this year. Don't okay. know. Uh, back to you. Well, yep. back to your club you used to support. So, uh, <laughs> have you seen it? <laughs> Have you seen any improvement in North Melbourne this year? I do still support the motto, but no, there's been no improvement at all. I, I, I think you can mount the case if you're on backwards. And I know that there's a big picture at play here, but I mean, the raw numbers yeah. sometimes reflect, sometimes they don't. But there's a damning number there. I, I've, I've got a real ma major problem with the fact they chose not to take in any key defenders. They brought Toby Pink in. He didn't even last four matches. And that wasn't his fault. he just come out of the sandful. And there's no support down there, and there's no support for Lucky. The midfield's OK. And it's Did you leave okay. Norwood Oval at halftime? Yeah, I <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> um, should we have a review system for match deciding moments like the Cottrell Mark Nat? No, because I think if you start reviewing all those little yeah. moments, you're just going to hold up the game and it's going to go on forever. And then where do you draw the line? I just think it opens a can of worms that we don't really want to open. I so agree with you. How, no. How's the goal umpires going? They're, they're reviewing pretty much more than they're not reviewing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It just makes you second guess <laughs> yourself as an umpire. Uh, to both of you, should Gather Round stay in Adelaide past its current deal? Lloydie, you I'm happy first. to look at it in a few years to weigh up whether we could potentially go somewhere else. Because in a few years we may be, and we might be looking for something else. Yeah. So I'm happy to look at it. I like it. It's, it we know it's contracted to 2026. I'd like it to stay there. We know it works. I think there'll be a, a fresh influx of different people each year with the same number of people, and everyone gets to experience it. It works. I mean, we can, do, we can promote the game in other states in other ways. Or let's not gather around. I'd be happy to go to Perth, mm. WA. Yep. Just hit up some new sites. <laughs> uh, time now to check out thecrypto.com. Footy tipping leaderboard. Board, and we all got nine, which how good, except uh, that means that Lloydie and I have not made up any ground on Smug Damon. I was asking Damon all weekend, did you get any wrong this week? <laughs> he was actually. <laughs> <laughs> not to be. All right, that is all we have time for in Access All Areas this week. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Enjoy. Enjoy.